Hello everybody, welcome to uh, New Year's Day 2020. Um, I, I'm sure when I get this video edited and uploaded it will not be New Year's Day anymore, but yeah, you know, whatever. Um, hope everybody has a good uh, 2020. Um, but uh, I had the day off, um, so I figured why not come out and uh, have a little campfire lunch, enjoy some time outdoors, enjoy some time de-stressing from work. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of worried about about work coming up here in the next who knows how long. And it's not gonna be a lot of fun, but that's what uh, getting outdoors is for, you know, kind of de-stress and get away from all that kind of stuff. So that's what I intend on doing today. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, same old thing, you know, we'll get a fire going, cook up some food. And, um, and uh, last time I came out, I did my little um, memorial uh, tribute to uh, Morris Kohansky. And I made uh, tea on that uh, outing. And I, I um, while I was making, when I planned to make the tea, I kind of realized that maybe it would be more fitting to make uh, cowboy coffee or bush coffee, whatever Morris called it, um, where you just uh, throw the grounds and the water in the pot and boil it and all that. And I've made it before. I know I've done that on a video or two in the past. Um, but I was kind of inspired by a, a really big monkey. Um, uh, he did a, a, a Morris uh, tribute video and he made bush coffee. And uh, that kind of made me want to come out and do it because, uh, um, I don't know, I just kind of felt, I sort of felt like I should have done it the first time, but at the same time, I, I felt okay with, with doing the tea thing. And you know, nothing wrong with that. Um, I do think I made that tea like way too strong if you, uh, Notice how many uh, tea bags I threw in that. I think that was, I don't know, probably twice, twice what it should have had. But <laughs> anyway, um, and there was um, when I uh, looked back on my video, as I was editing my uh, my uh, Morris uh, Kowalski tribute video, I realized that there were some things. Th there was some more stuff I kind of wanted to say about him. Um, so I figured I'd just kind of come out and kind of touch on that today but um thanks for joining me on a nice de-stressful um new year's day outing um i have to say uh, here in kansas it is uh well, where i'm at it's supposed to get up to about 50 degrees today which for um, january 1st in my opinion is rather disgustingly warm uh, weather it shouldn't be that warm this time of year it should be cold it should be preferably snowy there's a little bit of snow that's you know in the process of melting from a couple of days ago but uh, it's just been too warm here this winter is not shaping up to very, be a very cold one unfortunately you know we need our cold winters because that's part of the uh, proper balance of nature you know it helps kind of kill certain things off um, over the winter that uh, don't need to thrive in, in these environments uh, you know, like out in Colorado, they have they have had for quite a while now big problems with bark beetles, and apparently a lot of that stems from the fact that the winters haven't been as cold and it hasn't been killing off those bark beetles to the extent that they should be. So, you know, winter needs to be cold, and I enjoy getting out and uh, camping in the cold weather, and uh, it remains to be seen how much of that's going to happen this year, because um, so far it's not looking that great. But who knows? Weather can change, especially in Kansas. But enough of blabbing to the camera. Let's uh, actually like, do something like light a fire, and make some coffee, make some lunch.
just shaving up a little fat wood here. Probably really should have gathered up a lot of smaller, finer twig sticks for this, but I think we can probably get it going. What I've got. Got a lot of these really thorny pieces here. Honey locust, I think, is what it is. Nasty, nasty thorns. for a cowboy coffee or bush coffee whatever you want to call it pretty simple put some water in your pot and yeah it should be good and then just dump the coffee grounds right in there I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it to do it. Uh, Morse Kansky always said you could use any cheap old coffee grounds for this and you would get good good coffee from it just because it does such a good job of this method does such a good job of extracting the uh, flavor from the grounds. I'm using Seattle's best which is actually halfway decent coffee but <laughs> but anyway. Now it is ready to go over the fire. Just need to set up my uh, trusty pot support here. Now we just need to bring that to a boil 
and uh, let it boil for a minute and then take it off. I'm going to go ahead and take the lid off of this in the hopes that maybe I can keep it from boiling over. I think you a little closer watch on it. In my experience, camp coffee boils over very easily when it first starts boiling. And if I remember correctly, I think that uh, Morris Kohansky said that's because um, at first when it starts boiling, it releases oxygen or something from the water, extra oxygen that's bound up in it or something, and that's why it bubbles so much, so much extra. It's getting a little steamy, at least along the sides of the pot. I'm sure the sea would be boiling already if it wasn't for the wind blowing the heat every which way. But, you know, this is Kansas and it's windy, so that's nothing new. It's just starting to bubble in there. Here we go, it's boiling. I'm going to time this thing, let it boil for a minute, and then uh, take it off. As long as that thing maintains a decent boil. Definitely think taking the lid off helps it. <laughs> helps prevent it from boiling over. That didn't even come close to boiling over. I've definitely boiled it over multiple times with the lid on in the past. Yeah, that wind is just wreaking havoc on the on this pot trying to boil. So it's been a minute, but it hasn't been a very good rolling boil. I think I might just take things in my own hands, literally, and uh, kind of hold this right over the flames. You don't want to let it boil too long because otherwise you start extracting stuff that doesn't taste so hot out of the beans. Alright, I'm going to call that good. Put the lid on it. I'm just going to let that sit for a few minutes. Kind of let things settle in there. Then I'll try pouring a little uh, cold water in, in there to help kind of shock the grounds down to the bottom. I don't think I've ever actually done that before. I've just kind of left it to its own devices and it usually works pretty well all by itself. Just getting those grounds to sink down. Okay, now I'm going to pour some water, some cold water in here. 
from a good height. There we go. Get those grounds to settle to the bottom, even though they probably already were mostly settled down there anyway. Okay. Pour a nice cup of coffee here. There's my uh, bush coffee, cowboy coffee, whatever you want to call it. Delicious as ever. Yeah, and they're, I, so far I don't see any grounds in there whatsoever, but uh, I usually have never had any problem with the ground settling out just fine, even without doing the water splashing trick. But uh, definitely makes some very good coffee. And the nice thing about it is you don't need any any extra equipment. All you need is a pot and that's it. You don't need a little funnel thing or uh, coffee filters or any of that stuff. But um, hopefully this uh, branch is throwing a shadow doesn't uh, isn't causing a really annoying shadow thing going on on the video here like casting it right across my face but uh, anyway I kind of like the spot to sit in so uh, I think I'm just gonna go with it um, but um, now this I don't intend for this video to really be a an instructional video on how to make camp coffee or uh, cowboy coffee bush coffee um, I would definitely recommend uh, checking out uh, uh, the video that video or videos that Morris Kahansky, um did, um, and also uh, uh, I would recommend watching Really Big Monkeys uh, um, Morris uh, tribute video um, because he actually sh does a better job of showing you how to actually make camp coffee and talks more about it. But among the things that I had been reflecting on that I hadn't touched on on my uh, little um, Morris Kohansky memorial video was how he, it always kind of, uh, um, it always kind of struck me how he was a guy that definitely had a, a big time thirst for knowledge. Um, and I really got the impression that a lot of what he, uh, a lot of what he learned, he, um, it was kind of more of a self-education type thing. Um, now I know he definitely learned stuff from other people. He picked up stuff from from others, from mentors like uh, uh, Tom Roycroft, I believe was his name. I almost said Ray, but I think I'm confusing Ray Mears. Tom Roycroft, I think was his big outdoors um, mentor. I think Tom Roycroft uh, taught survival uh, classes to uh, the Canadian Air Force, if I remember correctly. Um, so he definitely learned a lot from other people, um, from mentors, from people that he would, you know, he would go out someplace and see them doing a certain thing a certain way and he would draw on that knowledge. Um, he definitely, like I mentioned before, had a humongous book collection. You should, I mean, there's that Karamat Wilderness Ways has a video or two that shows some of his uh, library, his book collection, and it is... No joke, it's, it'll probably surprise you <laughs> how many books he had. And they're like, you know, all sorts of subjects. It's not just outdoor stuff. I mean, the outdoor stuff itself probably only may have a very small part of it. Um, but if I remember correctly, I think that he, for a while, went to college. I think while he was maybe in the Canadian uh, Navy um, studying uh, chemical engineering. But I don't think he went too far with that. So it's, I, to my knowledge, I don't think he ever earned a uh, college degree uh, the conventional route. I do think that he got some honorary um, a, an honorary, honorary degree or two from a, a Canadian university I believe. One thing I really liked about Morris Kohansky was he was a guy that you could tell he liked knowing how things worked um, because I'm that way. I like you know you, you know a certain thing does a certain thing it works a certain way but and a lot, a lot of people are fine with, you know, it works, whatever. 
But there's a lot of people like us that like to know kind of why is it, why is it that it works that way? What are the scientific principles behind it that, that cause it to function that way? And I can tell that Morris was definitely a guy that asked those questions and, and liked to find out how things worked. I mean, for instance, like talking about how how when the the bush coffee starts boiling, it how it boils, it's, it foams up quite a bit. And how he said that that's like, it's because of the, the water's really seeing more oxygen, something like that. Um, and that's one of those things. It's kind of a scientific principle that he had somehow found out that that's why it did that. Um, and there's a lot of, uh, I've, I've run across a lot of instances where, you know, you can tell that Morris really understood the stuff he was talking about because he had kind of he he kind of looked deeper underneath the surface to figure out why things function the way they did, um, and uh, I oftentimes do that, and that's part of the reason why I was always kind of impressed with uh, with his um, teachings, instructions, whatever. But you know, I I was kind of thinking a little bit earlier yesterday or today about how um, just kind of like outdoors outdoors mentors and uh, you know how much of a, of a treasure they are. Um, you know, I, uh, one of probably my biggest outdoors mentor was, uh, um, my old scout master, Dick Lundquist, who died pretty darn close to five years ago now, within, within a week or so, it'll have been five years. Um, and, uh, you know, I learned a lot from him over the years. And, you know, Morris Kohansky, although I, you know, he's, he's kind of a mentor in a different sense. I never met him in person, um, although a lot of people did. And I know he definitely mentored a lot of people in person. Um, but, you know, he's kind of one of those teachers that you can kind of put in that kind of a more indirect mentor uh, um, category, I guess. And he's gone. Um, and I've kind of noticed how, um, you know, you, you, what you need to try to do is to take, you know, take the teachings and things you learned from your mentors and then kind of go out on your own and um, draw from that what you've learned, but also you want to add to it. You know, you don't want to try to, it's really silly to try to make yourself into some sort of clone of your mentor. That's, it's just stupid. You don't want to do that. You know, for one thing, it limits you and, you know, it, it's kind of dumb to try to live in your life <laughs> sort of as somebody else in a sense I guess um, but you know you want to draw from your teachers and then go out you know build upon that um, expand you know kind of where they started you and then obviously you know you you should uh, try to give back and you know and uh, you know pay that knowledge forward that you were lucky enough to get and to uh, um, share it with you know other of your your peers in your generation and all, definitely you know people of the younger generations you know we have a really rich history of uh, outdoors um, knowledge and skills and stuff that you know people have been carrying on and building on for for many 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 years you know, a lot of this stuff, and it's, I think this sort of thing is even more important nowadays because, you know, a lot of, in years past, um, a lot of this kind of bushcraft outdoorsy type stuff that we do now was, was more day-to-day -day living stuff for people. Um, starting fires, cutting wood, cooking over fires and stuff. I mean, that's what people did every day. Um, and now in our modern world, a lot of us don't do it unless we get out and do this kind of stuff. So there's all the more reason to um, practice these skills, learn these skills, pass them on, mentor, mentor others in them. Um, and yeah, Morris Gohanski did a great job of that, a very good job. Um, it's, it's sad that he's gone, but you know that's that's the way life goes. You're here for a while and then you're not. And uh, you know, hopefully you uh, go on to. Uh, um, you know, better places, we're a better place um, after that. 
but that's the thing it's not really the uh if i could get a little deeper into the <laughs> this this subject i guess you know it's as you go through life it's not the junk it's not the money and the, the stuff that you accumulate the toys you accumulate um that really matter when you're gone it's it's you know what you taught other people um it's maybe the the, the things that you kind of left behind and in, in terms of you know works of art is, is one example um knowledge if you like write a book or something you know that's something you're leaving behind and ultimately you know love is kind of what remains you know the love that you shared with your uh, family and uh you know that remains it's not that's the stuff that matters it's not the you know junk you accumulate it doesn't matter how much money you have when you're when you're dead you're you're not going to spend any of it but those are just a few more thoughts on on morris and uh outdoor mentors and all that sort of stuff um Coffee's pretty darn good. And I say I did a pretty good job of guesstimating how many, how much coffee grounds to dump in there. Yeah, that last time with that tea, that stuff was a little bit too strong. Well, I'm getting hungry, so I think it's time to cook some food here. Gonna put some water on for some mashed potatoes. Throw on a couple of bratwurst. Smoke is just blowing every which way. Doesn't seem to have any idea which way it wants to go. Just want to make sure I cook these bratwursts through, but don't burn the living heck out of them. boiling on the side of the pot. The whole thing really isn't boiling yet though. Yep. I think 
olive oil. Got some uh, Idahoan mashed potatoes. Instant mashed potatoes. I know it's not the most uh, inspired uh, campfire meal, but uh, that's all right. Just had to kind of guesstimate how much water I put in there. So hopefully I didn't put too much. It doesn't look too bad anyway. Can't get much easier than that. I think I'll call that good. Let's have some uh, sourdough bread here. What's it brought without some good mustard? Got some spicy brown mustard. No sauerkraut, didn't have any at home. Finally time to dig in. Have my uh, brats and my uh, Morris pot full of uh, somewhat somewhat uh, runny mashed potatoes. I guess I wouldn't quite, quite call them runny, but they're a little uh, little liquidy. If that's even a word, probably not. Didn't bring any uh, German beer with me or anything to go with the brats. But a good little uh, New Year's Day lunch. Tastes great though. I don't think I've ever heard of eating brats and mashed potatoes together, but whatever. Well, that pretty much does it for me. I'm gonna wrap this video up here. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more. I hope everybody has a really great year 2020. And uh, yeah, let's hope for good things. I'm Gareth with Mountain Coffee Outdoors. I'll see you next time.